I want to give my opinions on why I feel like it's so easy for INFJs to get into a rut or really start to get stuck. And I think this is like one of those things where INFJs often try to explain this to people. They're often trying to explain how, you know, they have such a vivid sense of a lot of the time, like what they actually really want to do. They have a really vivid sense of how they want to approach situations as well. But then when it actually comes to getting the rubber to meet the road, that's really where I see INFJs struggling. This can be pretty difficult to explain. It can be pretty difficult because introverted intuition is a pretty abstract kind of function. I think that I see some people trying to diminish introverted intuition into something where it's like, Oh yeah, it's just recognizing a couple of patterns in yourself and then, you know, and then, and then, oh, it's just your brain recognizing a constellation and that's it. But I would actually go ahead and say that introverted intuition runs a lot deeper than that. Introverted intuition is primarily concerned with really knowing and I think of it of getting a gist. So when you read something that's really powerful or you're sort of really if you're studying a philosophy if you're studying a religion if you're studying a psychological concept even what you'll notice a lot of the time is that some people are really good at retaining data and information about a thing they're really good at reading into something and you know they'll be able to tell you 10 to 40 different facts about that thing after they read it and it's really impressive it almost seems like they really understand it but although they can isolate those facts, they might not really get the gist of it. Where someone using introverted intuition as a dominant function, like an INFJ, like an INTJ, there tends to be, I notice, more of a sense of being able to understand the overarching structure of something, like the gist of what it is. The INFJ is going to get a really good sense of what, what is the flavor, like if, if the INFJ is reading, thus spoke Zarathustra, right? They're going to read that and they're not just going to be analyzing these little statements that Nietzsche's writing. They're really going to be able to understand the essence of where Nietzsche's coming from. And that's because introverted intuition, as, as far as I see it, is primarily concerned with understanding the sort of gaps between the words, right? Intuition is primarily focused on what you can't see. It's what could be. It's the possibility that's the part that makes it sort of more of an abstraction. Introverted intuition is very good at plotting out what could be and sort of exploring into the essence of something. But it's not necessarily uh, as practical of a function. So if we reverse it around and we say that we have, say, like an ESTP, ESFP, they're going to have extroverted sensing, extroverted sensation as their dominant function. So when they go about doing something, they're looking to go for the experience first, right? They're not really paying attention to the essence or the sort of the meaning behind the thing or the significance, at least they're not in a primary way. That's something that they tend to struggle with a little bit more, but they also tend to aspire to, right? The inferior function that we have is the function that we often aspire with. So if we say we have an ESFP and they're going to explore something in the world, they're going to the Grand Canyon, when the ESFP goes to the Grand Canyon, what that's probably going to look like most of the time is they're actually just more enthralled in having the experience itself. Like my ex-girlfriend was an ESTP and for her, like if I ever mentioned going to a new restaurant or going out to her, it was just, she immediately just lit up at the prospect of having the experience of going to do the thing. She wasn't necessarily so concerned with the meaning behind it or why we were doing it or what the significance was or what the subtleties of this particular restaurant was. Like they're things that she could maybe aspire to. Like she kind of had a sense of wanting to get more involved in that kind of territory. And that's where I felt I was more competent. But when it comes to it, she just wants to go to the restaurant. When it comes to it, she just wants to go see the thing. So for the INFJ, there is more of a sense of understanding the essence of something and really being able to explore the concept or explore the idea behind something a lot easier than the actual experience it itself. And that can come with getting things done. So you'll notice that when you speak to INFJs a lot of the time, or if you're an INFJ watching this, the INFJ tends to have a terrific ability 
to be able to understand what it is that they really want a lot of the time, I think. I mean, sure, you know, INFJ can get lost just like anyone can get lost and, and sort of be stagnant, not really know what they want in life. But I think that an INFJ can be very good at plotting ahead what it is that they'd really like. And I think that the specific skill that INFJs have a lot of the time is sort of a skill in really getting a tangible sense of what that will be like to experience that thing. So, you know, sometimes you get those personal development teachers who tell you like, Try to really imagine what it feels like to have the thing already, like to put yourself in the state of consciousness of someone who has a million dollars, for example. I actually think that with introverted intuition as a dominant function, an INFJ is really naturally geared towards this. Being able to sense into the, get their consciousness merged into what it's like to actually be at a certain state, what, it's really, what someone else is really saying as well. You know, introverted intuition can tend to abstract easier so it can get into someone else's perspective, especially as that extroverted feeling starts to develop more throughout the life as well. There's a sense of being able to move into another person's perspective quite seamlessly. And they might do it through be being able to sort of feel into what's going on for the other person, or they might do it more mentally, just purely through abstracting into their experience. But what's really happening here with the INFJ is they're really good at creating this sort of reality in their mind. So if it comes to, here's the thing that I want, here's the kind of career that I want, this is the kind of lifestyle that I want, this is the kind of concept that I'm interested in even, INFJ is going to be usually really good at being able to imagine what that's like. But then when it comes to actually getting that ball rolling, building up momentum and sort of implementing that experience component, that extroverted sensing component, and also the extroverted thinking component, which for an INFJ is the seventh function down. So this is in the trickster slot. So meaning that they're pretty much blind to it most of the time as it is actually plugging into the world, there needs to be some kind of alternative way of doing so. And I think that the way that an INFJ tends to do this is through aspiration. So there has to be a, a point where you're able to get to being able to imagine what the thing is, being able to sense into it, being able to get an understanding of what would be a really amazing reality for you which if you're an INFJ is probably quite easy. Like, let's be honest, you can sit there and imagine what the thing will look like quite well, what the essence of it is. Maybe you won't see a clear picture right away, but you'll be able, if I asked you, for example, if we sort of sat down and I said, what is really the essence of what it is that you want? Like, imagine you're applying for a new job. What would be, what is the essence behind that job? INFJ is usually going to be very good at sensing into why they might actually want that certain job, what the meaning behind it is, what that job really is about. It's kind of everything that, like I said earlier, between the words, it's all of the stuff that's conjoining. It's sort of the energy between. Sound, sounds a bit woo-woo when I'm saying it out loud, but this is what I feel like introverted intuition usually comes out as, which is why the INFJ often gets the wizard title, because there's sort of something that's a little bit mystical about being able to sense into the essence of something and make sense of something through the more essential component rather than just what you're seeing in, for face value in front of you. But if we were to say, let's take that thing that you're really getting a sense of the essence of, let's take that thing that you're really looking to understand, and then we were to say, let's start taking action with it, what starts to happen, and I really want you to be able to get this clearly because this is really where I think if, if you can understand this, I think you're going to really be able to see how an INFJ tends to get into a rut. When you take something that's quite abstract like that and you have the vision of it in your mind's eye, you have something that's really clear like that and you actually really enjoy having the idea and you, you're actually being able to feel it in your experience and get a, get a sense for it. When you take something like that and you start trying to sort of like translate that quality into the physical world into the physical plane so for example you have a really great idea and then you want to start making the thing what starts to happen is that the physical world is so chaotic right the extroverted sensing world just like plugging that into the world is so chaotic and it's so different from the abstraction 
that I think a lot of INFJs get stuck because they actually have like a cascade of brilliant introverted intuitive insight and information within them. And it's usually rendered with all that introverted thinking specificity. So it has a really great sense of its, its meaning is defined again through that gist aspect, but also it's very specific a lot of the time. So INFJ is gonna be compartmentalizing and making sense of stuff in a very specific kind of way but then actually translating it into an experience into life there's a clunkiness that can be this kind of like almost feels like performance anxiety and then like setting something up to do something and actually making it work in the world can be the most challenging part it's the most rewarding part because when that extroverted sensing actually starts to work properly and the infj is actually taking the steps that are needed to get um, that extroverted sensing going, then the INFJ can tune into that subconscious drive more. In the case of the INFJ, that would be ESTP. There's the ability to sort of tune into the subconscious and activate a whole new quadra of mind, a whole new area of mind where you're actually getting things going. And it's like you're noticing your more outgoing self, your more functional, capable, worldly self, not just the philosopher, right? not just the poet, not just the one who can go inward. That'll always be your main drive, but learning how to function in different ways is actually what makes it amazing to be human, right? Actually filling out and fleshing out the different capacities we have. But getting something from an abstraction and pulling it into reality and making it a real experience in, in the world, that is really why I think an INFJ tends to get into a rut a lot of the time. The rut tends to be uh, some sort of difficulty translating something more abstract into a concrete activity. And I think that the best way that you can work with this as an INFJ, or if you know an INFJ and you're trying to help them with being able to do this or getting out of getting stuck or getting in a rut, because you know that they're brilliant, you know that they actually have so much to offer, or you, if you're an INFJ watching this, you know you have so much to offer in that abstraction because you're in your zone when you can see it, but it's just being able to apply it I think that the key word, the key thing is momentum, right? If you're an INFJ and you're stuck, if you're an INFJ and you think you're in a rut or you know an INFJ who's stuck or in a rut, the key thing is momentum. How can you do one thing right now, just one, one thing that allows you to get started in bringing that beautiful illumined abstraction into something in reality? What is that one thing that you can do right now? If you want to make a YouTube video, do you have an iPhone? Do you have an Android? Can you put it down and just start talking? Because you could spend the next three months thinking about how you're going to do it and what it would be like to do that and how it would fit with you, but then not really getting anywhere with it because you need something that is in your subconscious, that extroverted sensing drive, it feeds that introverted intuition. So you have more data now to speculate upon and understand. And then it feeds to that extroverted sensing and now you have more momentum and power in the world. And that power in the world feeds back to the introverted intuition. You have more understanding. But if you just stay within the comfort zone of introverted intuition and looping between usually introverted intuition and introverted thinking, the sense of just getting a really clear sense of it and then trying to make sense of it all in your mind, but then never really plugging it into the world, it tends to get lost because it doesn't really have any anchor point. So I think the answer is momentum. What is the one thing that you can do right now that allows you to just unstick yourself? Because that's really what's going to have to happen at the end of the end of the day, right? That is just my opinion on what I notice a lot in INFJs in terms of getting stuck or being in a rut being able to translate something from introverted intuition into an extroverted sensation experience, lack of being able to get momentum going. If you're an INFJ watching this and you relate to it or you had a bit of a light bulb moment, I appreciate you subscribing, helping me build up the channel, liking the video and sharing this to anyone you feel like would get value out of it. If you're watching this to try to get a better, better insight into INFJs because you have one in your life and you know that they're brilliant, but they, they keep kind of getting stuck or they kind of have a bit of a failure to launch, please share this with them. I want to know what they think. That's pretty much everything for today. I hope you're having a beautiful day and that's me.